and gentlemen, we are going to show you how to move your infantry properly. This is going to take into account understanding the different infantry types, the ranges, etc., etc. So many of you guys seem to be getting annihilated. I'm really not sure why. And by the looks of these things, uh, your coordination of units is practically nil. So I'm going to try the farmhouse which has got a low difficulty reading and i'm going to show you a couple ways that you could approach it i'm just, first try i'm just going to throw all my units forward charge them jump into close combat and try to win the game and then i'll show you perhaps in lengthier scenarios because this is only a four turn scenario of other methods you can choose to select to approach and maybe defeat your enemy so that's what we're going to go about and first off i'm just going to blitz them and see what happens so let's start up the farmhouse going through this garbage <clears throat> all right pretty simple let's look at your ob you can't do anything until you look at your ob first if you if you do then you're just clicking around so Russian, I don't really care about our forces first. We have to know what we're up against. Three regular squads. Gee, it looks like they have a lot of firepower. Looks like they're really going to annihilate us. And they have an LMG. And they have Corporal Glasgow. Well, first, the, first off, you have to understand how to read these units. Remember, all of these units are taken from Advanced Squad Leader. All right, or the, or the starter kit. Take your pick. Doesn't really matter. You have to understand... The bell curve and you have to understand that all units have a base level seven morale and that's what these tags are for i'm going to call them tags i forget what the book calls them but i'm going to call them tags because tags whatever i'm not know what the military turn is i'm not a military guy so if you have one tag and that's a base seven morale which is right in the middle of the bell curve then all the infantry on both sides are regular, and even the veteran infantry are seven morale. So if you look at Corporal Glasgow, what is his morale level? If he said seven, you'd be incorrect. It has one more than seven, so therefore it'd be eight. The exact same thing with Schmidt and Müller, right? Now we have to understand what the stars mean. You guys may not understand what the stars mean. For those that do, more power to you. For those that don't, Either read the manual or go through some of the tutorials. Leadership and leaders in the game are extremely important in getting your troops going. If you don't use your leaders properly, your guys will break, which they will. I mean, we've all seen the AI shoot shit and get thousands of rate of fire. Doesn't matter. If you can't rally them fast, then you're bound to lose the game. It's as simple as that because you just can't go after stuff um so um gray stars mean you have no effect on the direct fire or the rally of the units in terms of modifiers however leaders do give other units a better chance of rallying the standard rally procedure is if i'm a broken unit and i don't have the two exclamation points over my head the two exclamation points means that it's very difficult for you to rally with or without a leader. The better the leader, the more likely you can rally. So, and the worse leader, the less likely you are to rally. So if you only had the one exclamation point that tells you that that unit can be easily rallied if it just has a leader, even if it has a shitty leader. So if you are in terrain as well, like woods or buildings, typically, the other ones probably don't give you a modifier, but it doesn't show, it might show you. We might check it out. But Glasgow will help you rally better than the other units. Again, you don't see those modifiers. That's all behind the scenes. So if you're trying to rally, you in your turn, the computer tries to rally one of your units that is broken. The one that is the best chance of rallying. That's in the manual. If you didn't read the manual, you wouldn't know that. So if you have a eight morale unit which you could tell by the by the tags probably don't run to go over him you might want to send your leader to a unit that might need some more help the eight morale units probably going to need to roll an eight 
if he's in a woods or building when he's only one exclamation point, right? If he's two exclamation points, he'll probably need to roll a four if he tries to self-rally himself, okay? Remember, it's all based on two, di two dice. It's all based on ASL. So if he's by himself, he needs to roll an eight if he's in woods or building, right? If he's with the leader, he'll have to roll a nine. Really easy to do. But if you have a five morale unit over here, the leader will actually make it easier for him to rally in that location. Slightly better than he was, like 10 or 15 uh, percent better than as if he weren't worth the leader. That doesn't mean he's going to come right up. That just means you're giving him a better percent chance of rallying. He may be there for turn after turn after turn because, remember, on the bell curve, you probably have to roll a six or less for like a green unit to rally, right? That's not all that easy sometimes. It could be multiple turns for you to do that, or you might get lucky. So that's rallying, and we're going to try and go over some leader, the, the, the Schmidt here, with the Golden Star. The Golden Star means he gives a modifier to whatever the hell he's doing in the game. If he's helping you push a gun, if he's helping you fire a machine gun, if he's helping you rally, you know, all that, will, that one star gives you a one better modifier to work your magic. So you'll be much more successful. The eight morale unit I described earlier that was in the woods by himself, Schmidt will re reverse one of these self-rally dice rolls, which means essentially what he'll do is, since he's in cover, he probably needs a nine base. And then since he's got a star with him, he'll probably need a 10. Can you roll a 10 on two dice? Yeah, that's like five and six. So it's like, a, what is it? 87% chance or 83% chance of rallying that unit. And the, on, the, on, the, on the flip side, if he's trying to rally a um, broken, not double exclamation point conscript unit, most conscript units in the game have a morale of five because there's six morale. And on the back side, again, if you read the manual, some units that are broken have lower morale and some have higher morale. So that you can't really see, but just understand that concept exists. Uh, I might have more details later on. We can get into that in a later time. So if you have a base five morale and then you're in woods, it kind of cancels the self. If you try to rally by yourself, it cancels it out. But if a leader helps you in to rally in the woods, regardless of whether it's a zero leader, negative one leader, or a uh, star, golden star leader, it kind of gives you a bonus not being able to, you know, essentially someone's there to help you rally. It gives you a bonus of one. And then what happens is, is, it, is if you're in, in that situation, instead of a five or a six needing to rally, you essentially need a six or a seven to rally based on your morale, which is, again, like 10 or 15% higher each time. So uh, understanding how fast troops will come back is a key concept in the game. Uh, most of the time, your leaders can whip around the map and uh, go for stuff. Don't ever, ever, ever move your leaders first in the turn, period. That's just a simple fact. If you're going to lose, move, move your leaders, most of your enemy units are going to be green. Most of the time, they'll fire within your own range. Most of the time. Snipers, you, God, I hate snipers. Any other unit. You don't want your leaders to draw the fire because when your leaders break, they can't rally anybody if they're broken. They got to rally themselves and therefore your entire attack stalls. So we're going to hopefully try and show you something like that. So that's the basics of the very basics of leaders and morales. Now we talk about the machine guns here. Uh, the Russians have one light machine gun. It has a rate of fire, a reload rate of 17%, which means one in six. It will reload again. It will malfunction uh, on four percent, which, in ASL terms, reflects a dice roll of an eleven or a twelve. Whereas, in contrast, uh, the medium machine gun for the Germans has a rate of fire or a reload rate of thirty-three percent, which means essentially you're rolling a one or two in ASL terms on a six-sided die. That's the same thing. It has a firepower of five percent or five, and a 1% um, malfunction, which is essentially a dice roll of 12. It's actually rounded down, but 
you can see the difference there. Um, the LMG for the for the Russians is slightly, actually slightly higher than the ASL one. And so your units on 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 the right hand side, look at their ranges. You have three three veterans, twelve hex range. What's the firepower of this unit when he fires at uh, someone at eleven hexes? You type it down below wherever you want. If he fires at a range of seven to twelve. This unit's firepower will not be four. It will be two. So if you're always firing at like maximum range, and the same thing with the medium machine gun, it has a range of 24. That's the maximum range. So if this machine gun is firing at anyone at 13 or to 24 hexes, it will have two and one half firepower. Then what you need to do is, okay, Two and a half firepower is there. Okay, Stu, let's say I'm firing at, well, not, not 12. Let's say I'm firing at two and a half firepower at 15 hexes. First of all, none of your squads can fire that far. Only your medium machine gun can. You have two and a half firepower. Now, what's the in? If he's in a, any sort of terrain, you're going to have a very low chance of affecting them. So there's almost no point in actually taking that shot. Again, based on the bell curve, and I'll throw up a, throw up a, a site here or a, essentially the ASL rendition of how these results are tabulated and you'll see how that goes. So take a look up here for that. So given that the medium machine gun is two and a half firepower, your machine guns firing at long range will have minimal effect. Everything firing at their range, six, eight, 12, 24, the Russians are four and 12, half firepower if you move and i think you could still fire at your normal at your range you're going to be halved and then you're going to be halved again but we're going to test that see how far they can actually shoot so your crappiest unit your best units are your veterans they have the range of 12 an effective range of six at full firepower your regulars are effective range of four with four firepower so the regulars fire you know 66 percent as far as the veterans and then your the, these troops here are your half squads that have a, essentially an effective three hex range at two firepower so it could fire at six hexes at one firepower the weakest firepower you're going to get if they're in any terrain whatsoever it's you're not going to have an effect stop firing those units and expecting stuff to happen you're only frustrating yourself so but if the enemy's moving in the open ground in no cover at all so it's a no cover situation and they're moving that's where the the green the dot and the red dot are you, you they pop up that tells you the vulnerabilities so that's a those, those are modifiers to the dice roll so even at the one firepower the lowest column which i think in in asl you have to have a resolution of five to have an effect even in one firepower unit if he rolls a seven because he's moving in the open with no cover is going to subtract two from your die roll. So if you roll the average seven on the bell curve, it will drop it down to a pin check and you could actually get a pin on a unit with your crap units with no firepower. That's what you're seeing here. When you're moving your units in the open, a giant stack of guys that are moving in the open versus units that are in range, you're for all intents and purposes, because you're giving them negative dice roll modifiers, you're increasing the effectiveness of those units, far increasing the effectiveness of those units. So that's why you're getting shredded. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So that's the basics of what people need to understand about these particular units in terms of member, it's all ASL based. It's not that hard. Just understand that like the regular units right here, five firepower, that's a lot of firepower. How far can the unit shoot? Four hexes, that's it. If you run at five hexes, you run around these guys. You just you go around them. See ya. Nice knowing you. If you run within t uh, three to four hexes, what's the firepower if one of those squads fires at you? If you run at three to four hexes of that guy right there, should be two and a half firepower. He'll be at half firepower because that's long range. Right? And uh, hopefully those, those modifiers will show up in in the screen
and the, the, now, now the machine gun has a range, a normal range of six, so it will fire three firepower out to six, and we're going to find out how that happens. So, given these units, which are the units that are most expendable for the Germans? Because we're going to be assaulting the farmhouse. Which ones are the most expendable? If you want to lose anybody, who do you want to lose? Weakest units. Weakest units would be the regular the regular um, half squads. A, if they get shot and they broke, you're only losing two firepower. And B, if they get eliminated, you're only losing a half squad, which is only one point against you. If you lose a full squad, that's two points. And again, those are in the manual as well. So when you're talking about squad ratios, you know, reading the manual helps, guys. Check out the manual. The manual's not that hard. It's 104 pages. 50 pages is just scenario design, campaign design. 20 pages is terrain modifications. About 8 pages is the actual game. So it's not that hard. So let's get into the game. We're, we're, our ELR, essentially our tiredness, our fatigue level is normal on both sides. The ammunition is normal on both sides. So we're just going to pop it again. So here, here's what we have. We have a rifle unit here, a regular unit. He's all by himself. He's green, green bar. Green bar means he can fire at full efficacy. Now we have all these other units. We don't know who they are. Well, technically we don't know who they are, but we do know who they are. The problem is, is where's the LMG? Can you find out where the LMG is by looking at the map? The answer is... Hell yeah, you can. There's concealed, which gives them defensive modifiers. So who's this dude? He's got a little leader hat on. He's a leader. These guys inside. They've got soldier hats. They're soldiers. This is a squad inside. The leader's outside in the building. Same thing with these jokers. Now, where's that LMG? Problem is, these trees obscure it pretty well. Let me zoom it. It's right. There's like one guy right here. There's like one guy right in here that has a fancy looking Russian LMG. Uh, it's hard to see it in this case. So in that case, the concealment works out really well. So what I'm going to show you is what's going to happen when all these guys, just, we're just going to charge the leader first. What's going to happen? If I move him right here, is he going to fire on me? And what modifiers is he going to fire at? Can he fire on me? Right? The thing about the game is, is when they're concealed, it doesn't tell you that you're going to be subjected to the open, the no cover, and the moving modifiers. Because it, these guys are concealed. You don't know nothing, right? It's like a gun that might be set up in this location here, blasting the living shit out of you when you move in that location. Same thing here. So if I move this unit, I'm not going to, remember, I'm not going to select submit. If I move this vector unit here, will he get fired on? Almost 100% yes. A, he's either going to get fired on by this unit here, because what's that range? One, two, three. If he gets, if he moves here, is he going to get fired on? Highly likely. If he moves here, he goes, is he going to get fired on? It's possible, because that's the range of the machine gun. That is not the range of the units that are in that hex. So let's move here. Look at that. Wow. What a surprise. Never saw that one coming. Look at the unit. LMG, red, which means it did not get a reload. And then we've got the unit here. He's yellow. He's fired on that unit. Look at the modifiers on the left-hand side right above my head. I'm not sure why it's not bigger. You've got a, this was the, this was the, was the result. And when you click on the result, it tells you what happened, where it happened, right? If I don't do that, so it was an LMG that shot your ass up, and you were moving, and you were moving in the open. So it had a 36% chance of a KIA, um, uh, and uh, or half squatting you, and a 10% chance of pinning you. More than likely, he's going to shred you. Okay, KIA half squad or break. 36% 36, 36 chance of one of those happening. Okay, now if I move my leader here, what's going to happen? If I move him here, because where's this guy going to route to? Hopefully he'll route to here. It's possible that he may route over here. I don't know. 
a lot of times he won't route here. But let's move our this guy over here first. We're going to move him. If he moves here, what's going to happen? Why, why, is, why do those icons show up there and not there? They show up here because that R unit, the first one that we see in that region here, right here, that's within his range. One, two, three, four. What will his firepower be? What will his firepower be? Oh, it's medium machine gun. Look at him. He's yellowed out. What was what, that's his range? Do you see how far he could fire? That's his maximum range. So if you move in that middle brown spot, is that going to be an effective attack? I mean, you're going to be moving in the open because plowed fields doesn't give you any cover. It just costs more to move into. The yellow guy, maximum range right there is four. He's the only one that could fire there. Guess what? This guy doesn't show up. Why? Because he's concealed. He's got the question mark on him. This guy shows up because he's known to us. That shows you his range. That firepower at that location there will be what? He's yellow, which means he's probably going to be firing at half firepower. And then he's going to be firing at long range. So he will have an effective firepower of like probably rounded up to one. So, but problem is, is we're going to be moving. I'm not going to move the medium machine gun. We're probably going to be moving, and it's essentially going to be a one minus two. So we're going to bait that shot anyway. See, burp, burp. Nothing. There's burp. A little wimpy ass fire. And uh, he should be red, to be honest with you, if he fired from there. So now, oh, now, now his shot is at two. Now he can't, maybe that first fire, maybe it's kind of inadvertent. Maybe if it fires the LMG, it automatically puts the unit as yellow. So now he can't even fire again. But this unit here can fire at four hexes. So given that he could only fire at four, this guy, one, two, three, four, the medium machine gun can freely move this direction. And if you take a route at this unit here, because he's only got a range of two, that doesn't involve the line of sight of either one of these units, right? Brown, it looks like this hex here, he can't see. So we're just going to charge a hex. He's only got a range of four, one, two, three, four. He's out of range anyway. Doesn't matter whether he can see us. So this unit, one, two, three, four, can't see us. We're just going to move right here. He can't do anything. Why is the MMG red? Why is the MMG red on here? It's because when you move medium machine guns and heavy machine guns, you can't fire them when you move them. Okay, that's why they're red. But your squad could fire. We could fire here, right? We're moving, so that's half. And he's got trees, another half, but 6% aiming chance to break him. That's his normal guy without the leadership. Now let's add his leader to him, right? Let's move the leader here. Will that affect the fire shot? It should, because now if the leader's firing with him, he's going to give him a modifier. Essentially, it's a minus one. Now you just went from 6% to 14%. When you're moving, so you move those units, and he has a 14% chance of uh, half squatting him or breaking him. So 9% chance of pinning him. Not bad. Now what happens? Let's move this guy. Now if we move here, we have to double time. When it's red, we'll have to double time. So what we're, what we're, the first thing we're just going to do, we're just going to fire these guys. A little star means his leadership modifier is applying to that shot. Nothing happened, 14%. Now, when you're moving units normally, you'll see that he can move the entire way out here, right? If you move using, see the differences between here? This is red, which means you're going to get shot out in the open. From whom? Who's going to shoot you? Who's going to shoot you right here? You should know exactly who can shoot you from right here. This guy cannot, 
This guy's the only guy that can shoot you. This guy can't. Range of two, because he's already yellow. Range of two, and he's already shot. This guy, range of four, he can shoot. So the movement markers on your units, if you select the white, it says everyone's got a movement of six. That includes double time movement. So everything in the game is the most you can do, not what your nominal, normal effectiveness is. Everyone essentially has, squads have unpenalized movement of four. They can move up to six, though, and be penalized. How do we know that? Most of the shit in the game, if it's red, you're dealing with the penalty. So let's take a It applies to movement as well. Do you see the green? Greens are typical bonus benefits. If I'm low crawling in that location with a green, I'm eliminating the, the, uh, the general movement modifier, negative modifier. I'm still in no cover, so I'll get that negative against me, but I'm not getting the full move like you would here. So, so the green modifier there is what we're kind of eliminating. So that's like a minus two. And if you were right here within range, it would only show one of them. And I'll, we'll we'll see that later. So there's green, which is the the safest movement. White is just normal movement, and red is a penalty movement. It is a penalty in your fire and your other movement options later. So we can move up to here, or up to here even. Right? This tells you how many movement points you have left. We have five left, four left, three left, two left. Right? But like I said, all squads, most squads have a movement factor of four, even green ones, I think, in this game. So if you move four hexes like this or or move through terrain up to four movement up to four movement points, it'll show two remaining. So I can move to that location and then be fine in my future fire. But if I move one more, guess what? The white goes away. It tells me how many movement points I have left. One. And I'm going to be ended up being, quote, red or like essentially it's double time, like double time movement. So I'm just going to move this guy like over here. We're going to move him red. He moves six. And what that does is next turn, when this unit moves, do you see on the marker down below on the regular? He is marked. He is marked with a coat counter that he ran this last turn. Right? He ran this last turn. And so therefore, next turn he can't run. He can only go four. And since this terrain here is about one and a half points to move through, right? It will essentially only be able to go one, two and a half, four. That's all the further we can move next turn. And then advance, of course. So who, who can he fire on? Look at this guy. Let's evaluate what the hell's going on here, guys. Right? We're trying to figure out how to maximize our firepower. Why can't we hit shit? Why can't we break stuff? Why is the aiming on this guy 2% when the guy up here, the medium machine gun that couldn't fire the medium, why was he base 6%? And then he went up to 14% when the minus one leader jumped on him. Look at this guy. Look, who is he? First of all, evaluate our unit. We moved, so that's automatically going to cut our firepower in half. And you see that in the upper left. You see that way above us. Way above us. Two firepower is what this unit has. If he fires at this guy over here, A, what are the penalties? Everything red is a penalty, right? Everything on the top is a penalty. Let's evaluate the penalties. We moved. That's the, um, well, first of all, we double timed, which is the red arrow. So if you red arrow to a location, you're going to have a penalty of one against you. It's like having a minus star leader, minus red star leader, affect your fire. Red is a bad thing. The red movement here is your double time penalty. Your guys are tired. They busted their ass to that position. They're huffing and puffing. It will affect their fire. The arrow crossing over two squares means that you've moved and now that is going to be essentially penalizing you for half firepower, which is mitigated the unit. And now the half, what's the half? Where the hell's the half come from, Stu? I don't know. We know what the green is. The green trees are his, ter his terrain. 
So plus one terrain for the trees. That's no that's that's the least of our problems is the trees. The half firepower is what? What's the range of our unit? Serious says eight. We we got eight range. We can fire out the eight hexes. Yeah. At half firepower. What's the range? One, two, three, four, five, six. Gee, anything over four is outside your normal range. If we were within normal range, if that was if our target was four, that half wouldn't be there. Okay? And we're gonna try and exemplify that in the next move. That half is because we've got double whammies on us. We moved, right? So that's gonna have our firepower. Now we're firing beyond our normal range, which is going to have it again. We have one and a half firepower, and against that unit there, he's going to have plus one woods, and then he's going to have plus one because we're high, excuse me, high tail in it. That's what the little red arrow means. So when he moves in his next move, and we fire on him in reaction fire, we still have a tag like that. It's still going to add one. So. You don't always want to move your units bust and ass the entire time. If they're going to be in a position to fire upon moving units or maybe fire upon units at the end of their movement, you might not want to double time the units. I'm going to qualify it as double timing. I'm not sure what the rules identify that as. But red arrow movement is good to haul ass. It's not good for any combat or close combat. So that's what those modifiers mean. Let's check out these guys over here. Okay. What's going to happen when the shooter moves here? He's going to be tagged with a red marker. What happens if he moves here? He's going to be normalized. If he moves here, tagged with a red marker. Why? Why is he tagged with a red marker in these spots and this spot, but not that spot? Remember? It says six on his movement. That's his maximum movement for this unit to move and retain essentially the integrity of not being tired, he can move four movement points. Woods are typically two movement points. Buildings are typically two movement points, right? Other terrain may vary. It might be one and a half. Uh, going over hedges, over walls, adds one. So if you went from this location here to this location, that's going to cost two of your movement points, right? If you went from here, it's going to cost you one. So if you move into the building, it's going to cost you two, most likely. And plowed fields is one and a half. So that rounds up. So if you moved into the building and into the plowed fields, essentially you'd have to red move to get to these locations here because you've expended, for all intents and purposes, 3.5 movement points. These cost one. You have to double time. So let's just move him normal. That's hard. We're just going to move him normal. We have two remaining movement points. We're going to note what the counter happens. So two for the trees, one here, one here. No marker. We're going to fire at full firepower with no modifiers. And again, let's that we could fire on this guy. Let's see what let's see what the modifiers are. Okay? Exactly the same as the other unit. We're still at half range, but we don't have the penalty of the red arrow. Okay, I'm still, um, you could probably take that shot. It's like a rat's chance in hell, but you could take it. These guys here, uh, we're just going to move them here. That means we have three movement points left. If we, if we move one, two, three, four, five, how do we move five and have three movement points left? Because we're moving with the leader. The leader has six movement points. As you, as you denote on the right-hand side. Look at those units in the bottom right. They have eight. They can go up to eight. Or they can go to six, like Mueller can. Mueller can move six, and he gives the units moving with him a bonus of two. So we can go here for five. One, two, three, four, five. And none of them are marked red. We could actually move here for the sixth one. Okay. And if you want a red, you can, you've got it. You've got to go red on your first action. You can when you tailor your actions going left and right. You have to do it all at once. Like I can't go red now. Like normally I could have made it here, but I can't do it. Should I move here? Am I going to get fired upon? What's this guy's range? Huh? 
Uh, doesn't show up anymore. Uh, probably because I can't see him. Yeah, I can't see him. It probably doesn't show up because I can't see him. So we know this guy's range is what? Look at the upper look at the upper spot. Four hex range. Maximum. So he could fire full fire fire to there it goes. It could only fire there. LMG? Can't fire at us all. Why? Because he's already fired the LMG at somebody else. And he's already fired his normal firepower at somebody else. Now he could only fire within his normal range. He can't fire outside his normal range or beyond a closer unit. And that that defensive fire uh, concepts is definitely what you should take a look at. Uh, Neil uh, Neil's uh, ASL Academy's videos. He's got a defensive fire principles. Pause this video here. And if this is confusing you, go check out Neil's. I'll try to link it down below. Um, it talks about the basics of this. I'm just using a live game to, to exemplify some of this. So we're good to go there. Uh, can we move here? If we wanted to advance up to this location, sure, we could do that. But these are kind of garbage units. We're just gonna we're just gonna chill right there. All right. So <clears throat> that's it for my move. Now tell me if the enemies can fire at anybody. Can the enemy fire at any of my units? You should know this. You already know who they are, right? You already know who they are and what their capabilities are. They have a five five power, pretty damn good which means you don't want to jump into close combat with them. And they have a range of four. Max range of four. This guy's range is what? One, two, three, four. This guy's already fired. It automatically shows you what his range is, what he's got left. He can't fire. This guy's a range of four, but no one's in his line of sight. No one's going to fire on us. All these are safe positions. Fire phase comes and goes. Escape phase, oh, it goes back in the woods. All right. Sometimes, sometimes he will route down here. Sometimes he goes up here. Um, I've yet to de kind of decipher that. Now we want to advance. What are some safe places to advance? Well, you probably want to go to cover. So let's just move these guys into cover. Right? Normally, if this broken unit were right here, I would move the leader into that location. But he's not, so I can't. So, and... Um, also, when this when the leader Schmidt gets fired upon by the light machine gun at long range to the squad, but normal range to the LMG, that's going to be a four firepower column. There's going to be a high chance that he'll get a result, and then there's going to be a small chance that we can maintain our composure, essentially pass our morale check. So if I have Schmidt in there, he has a morale of eight, which makes it much easier for him to pass a morale, and then if he passes his star will apply a modifier to the veteran's morale of seven. So that's how that works. This guy's more likely to break by the exact same shot than these guys are. So we're just going to move these guys up. Remember, his LMG can only fire on one of us, and his squads only have a range of four. So as long as we stay out of range of four, his LMG only has one shot. So if we move, if we move this unit here, He's going to be fired upon by their leader and that squad. All right. We might not want to bait that shot. Let's move here. These guys here. Do we want to bait a shot? Oh, I already advanced them. Sorry. My bad. My bad. So the leader here. What is our range for this unit? How far can our unit fire at full firepower? Look at the unit up there. What range can he fire at? Six. Six firepower is the range. So what do we want to go? Do we want to go here, 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 or back here? Who do you want to fire at? Well, if you go to the top spot, they could fit because you could have three units in the hex and I think any number of leaders. So he could fire on this unit or that unit, and his leadership will essentially negate those modifiers for his defense. If you go on the bottom, he could fire on the bottom two units. He could fire on the LMG or the guys in the building. The guys in the building, upper right, look at your wooden building, guys. There's a plus two modifier. Okay? So he'll only negate a partial of the building. So I'm going to take my best shot, and I'm going to advance these guys up here. You don't want to stack multiple leaders in a hex. 
in case he gets a lucky shot. You just don't. Just don't. Just have the leader run off the Timbuktu. Go get yourself some tea. Don't stack leaders in a hex if they're going to be exposed to fire. I will take that shot 100% of the time. This guy here, what's his range? Range of four. Normal range of four, which means he's going to be firing at long range regardless. Let's move here. Maybe we'll bait a shot out from the LMG. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's in range in the LMG. Maybe it'll bait a shot out. That's RNG for you. If I was a computer, I'd fire at this hex right here. Four hex range at four, at four and a half firepower. How do I know it's going to be four and a half firepower? Or actually five and a half firepower because the LMG is three. Because it shows you right there what the firepower is. He's going to have three for the LMG. And then that's going to be long range for the squad. Maximum range, it'd be to half, two and a half. So he'll he could fire here at five and a half plus one. It's really not that bad a shot. So advanced phase, we're done with that. Remember, we have double double exclamation points on our guy. Now, recovery phase comes. It's not our turn, so he doesn't get to rally. See, that's the RNG for you. He doesn't get to rally. So let's let's highlight. Can we highlight that? Uh, darn, it didn't pass it. Okay, so I'm gonna explain it. So he doesn't get to rally until our turn. So he will probably need a seven to rally. These guys are gonna rally. So what happened here? He fired on his lucky chart. Say, Stu, that's how it happens all the time. He shreds the living shit out of me. What happened here is he probably just got like a normal morale check and Schmidt got pinned. When your leaders get pinned, they can't apply their leadership to your dice rolls. So when he got pinned, if it was a normal morale check, let's say it's a one morale check on the ASL chart, which I'll, sh which um, which will show up here shortly, um, or which will be right here. If it shows a one morale check, which means and he gets pinned, that means everybody else has to roll a six or less to be okay. A six will pin them. A seven or more will break them. And it looks like they all, looks like they all went inexperienced too. That's pretty bad. So. They got shot. Shit happens when you pile units in one hex. And now they're going to route. And uh, and who's going to route with them? Is Schmidt going to go? Nope. He's pinned. He can't route with the units. Mueller will go. So he'll go with probably two units will probably go to the V guy in the back. And the other guy will just go randomly. So we got unlucky. Shit happens. And fire phase. We have three guys that can fire. Or three... Targets that could fire. He has a range of six. He could fire at full firepower. Okay. But we ran because we have the little red arrow on, the, on our guy in the bottom right. That's where the modifier comes from. And he's and he's in the building or in the woods. So for all intents and purposes, you know, he had a five plus one shot over here. And over here, we're going to have a four plus two shot. So our shot's going to be less effective. And so we actually got a pin out of that. This guy here can fire as well. His range is, our range here is four, so it's going to be half. And he's also plus one for that. So now, not only does, does he have the red penalty, he has the half firepower penalty, and he has the, the tree penalty. So because his firepower is half, guess what? His effectiveness is three. This guy's effectiveness was six. You might as well take that shot. Maybe he'll break. This guy here, again, range of four. His effective fire is going to be out to four hexes. Since this is at, at six hexes, look what penalties we see. We see the plus one for the trees, and he's firing at half firepower. We get to fire at half firepower. The R, white box infantry unit, is us. That's us. If we were in normal range, if that were a six firepower unit like this guy back here, uh, I think this guy's six then it would be like 12% or 14%. But well, we're going to take that shot anyway. It's just an infantry unit. He can't malfunction. And we got lucky. Look at that. Boom. Broke, and he got weakened, which means he went down to a green unit, which means his morale is jack shit. Look at his unit now. Okay? Do you see the, 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 red, the red bar? If he only had one bar, it would be seven morale. Now his base morale is a six. And, uh... Yeah, and actually might even be might even be worse since he's a broken unit. But that shows us that he's going to be taking checks at the six. So he's going to be breaking and dying even faster. 
All right. And that's it. That's all we have, Fireface. You don't have to fire all your guys. If you've got machine guns, and especially your vehicles, guys, stop firing your vehicles when they need like 2% chance. All you're going to do is malfunction your weapons most of the time. You're firing probably five times more than you should be in, out of your vehicles. Wait until you have a better shot. That way you can maximize your firepower. Okay. Escape phase. Our guy's running. Actually, our leader's routing with what? I'm not sure why a pin guy got to move. That's probably a problem. Um, uh, or maybe they maybe this game removes the pin status of your units. Uh, and look at most of these guys rally. Look what happened here. Remember I told you about this guy self-rallying? He only had one excavation points on him, which means he needs a seven to rally. So if he rolls a seven or less, he'll rally. You pick up some dice, you set some dice going. If you roll seven or less, 58% chance or some bullshit like that, he's going to rally. We made our rally check. Right here, one of these guys was the double star, double excavation points, which means it's very difficult for him to rally. We got one out of three. That's about what we should expect. Now, next turn, look at the recovery. Okay? Look at the recovery. The broken... Uh, did they, did they, uh, they're still regular units. They're broken. That's the minus one. The trees, do you see the trees? This is this is the importance of rallying, guys. The broken, which is the essentially the self rally I need to rally, right? The red tag is that you're broken and you're going to attempt to rally. Because you are in trees or a building, it is a green tag that cancels the red tag like I described before. So right there, he needs like a seven to rally. And what else do we have? We have the gold star, which is going to give us a bonus modifier. And if you look on your dice chart, chart, which is I'll show it right here. If you look at your dice chart, that modifies, I think the 58 to 72%. Okay, it gives you like 14% extra bonus, 12 to 14, whatever it is. That's where this number is coming from, guys. Base seven, minus one for the red tag, plus one for the trees, plus one for the leader. Right? If that was a gray leader, it wouldn't show up there, and the percentage would be less. And we're going to show you that because I'm going to move this leader out of it because it's our turn. So these guys, all these guys move back. So what does that mean? He's broken. If we can get to him, it will be more difficult for him to rally because he, we know we ha he has Glasgow there. Actually, he's he's a broken green unit. It's going to be difficult for him to rally anyway. So this unit, we can move him double time and advance phase him at this location. He's going to be shredded next turn, but sometimes that's what you got to do to keep him down. So we're just going to bust ass for this guy to go up. up uh, how far can he move here? We're just going to bust his ass up to here. He's not going to get fired upon because no one is in his line of fire. He's safe. Why did they move him here? Why did they move him there? Because I'm going to advance him here. Or maybe advance him over here. Because when these guys move, all I have to do is fire on this unit. If I just fire on this exclamation guy, he'll go double exclamation, which will give him penalties to rally. Remember when we had all those double penalties? I'll show you what they look like. Okay, We'll show you in just a second. Well, that's what the red tag is for. So this guy here, how far can he move? The guy's broken with the LMG. Can he fire the LMG? The answer is no. So what is the effective range of these units? How far can these units fire? Can I move safely here? Can I move safely there? Or can I move safely there? Okay. The answer is no. You can't move safely in any of those spots. Even though those little targeted... You know, the green icon, the moving one with the exclamation. Why? Because you got the concealed unit here. That's the benefit of having the concealed unit. It's showing that you don't know who he is, so you don't know if he's going to fire on you or not. So, knowing that, and we're, we're going to take a different route. Now, look at the modifiers down below, over here. The veteran's movement. Remember, we double-timed him. We red, we red arrowed his movement. He ran, now he can't do that this turn. 
So if I want to red arrow his ass, if I want to bust his ass, that's it. That's all the farther he can go. How far is this over here? How far is this over here? Guess what? Three green hexes, that's open ground. That's four movement points. This is four movement points. How far is that? Why Why can't we move any further than that, Stu? Well, because you're going through that, that plowed field, which is one and a half, and then you go two and a half for the green, first green hex, and then three and a half for the last green hex. That's it. You could move here, right? You could go here, here, then here. It just doesn't take that route for some reason. But you could physically go that direction because that's one and a half, two and a half, four. This way it just goes one, two, three and a half. Doesn't really matter. Now over here, what route do you think we want to take? Maybe here? If we move there, we'll get fired upon. Right? So if we want to get fired upon, if we want to move here, how do we get there? How do we get there safely? If we want to move there, we draw fire. Okay, Stu, we're going to draw fire. Who are we going to draw fire from? Well, who's our weakest unit? Who can we afford to lose? Who has the lowest firepower, the shittiest range? Who can we afford to lose right now? Well, maybe not nobody because half our guys are broken. Maybe a half squad. Do we have any available half squads? Well, the other two guys were shot to shit. The only one guy got casualty reduced, so that's why he the machine gun was a full squad, and he got he got casualty reduced. Essentially, he we lost a half squad. Thus, do you see the VPs on the top? Minus one VP. Why? Where'd that come from? Don't know. Computers ripped me off, dude. It came from the casualty of that meeting machine gunner. He lost a half squad, so we're down we're down a half a unit, but. I don't really care too much about this guy, so we're going to draw some fire. If we move here, he can't see us, right? Why? Oh, he can. This uh, this guy can. Why can that guy see you? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's normal, that's normal line of sight. That's a clear shot. Right there. So we're going to bait him. Not with the leaders. Don't move those leaders. Make sure you're highlighted. Don't make that mistake. We're going to move him right here. If he breaks, where is he going to route to? Most likely, he's just going to break. Because the only unit that can fire on us is who? The one squad that remains in this hex. The leader can't direct... Well, the leader can direct his fire to not cower, but the leader's not going to give me modifiers to make the shot better. He's not going to make the, make the shot better or worse because he's not a gold star or a red star. He's a gray star. He's just a... Five firepower unit with a maximum range of four. The we're going to be at a range of three. So what's his firepower going to be? Two. We're going to have the minus one because we're moving the open, and we're going to have the other minus one because we're not crawling. Right? Statistically, two firepower is a low shot. But if you subtract two from the dice rolls, that's going to generate a result. Most of the time, it will generate a morale check or so. It probably won't kill you. But it can, if he rolls like a snake eyes or a three. It's just going to kill you. And so that's what happens. We're going to bait his shot here, so he can't fire power. He can't fire on this over here, right? Because we don't want the one, two, three, four fire four range. We don't want to have. We don't want him to fire on us on this location because we're going to move these guys up this direction. Okay, we're going to move those guys up this direction. So we want to bait that fire there. One, two. And he's going to fire there. And he missed. Can we move here safely? Who fired on us? This guy. This guy can't see us because this wall should be blocking the line of sight. We're going to test that. None of the rest of these guys can shoot at us. The R guy, the yellow underscored unit, can only fire now in his, norm, in his regular range. Do you see his range is, well, his range is two. He can only fire out the two. And let's see if that works. Right there. He can only fire out the two now. Right? So, we'll take it to here. Why doesn't this unit fire on us? Because this wall's in the way. 
This unit can't fire us because we're out of his restricted range. Which means, what does that mean? He can only fire two hexes. Now, these units, if they want, if they could get up to here, uh, I would definitely move them up to there. Let's see if this unit, they, they can't make it. Darn it. All right, so we're going to move. We're going to move here. Is that safe? We got concealed units. Can he fire on us? Nope. Wall's in the way. He's not on a hill. He can't look over us. Can we move here safely? No. Do you see the green? The green target and the moving in the in, and the moving in the open? The no cover and the moving in the open is what we're looking at there. The no cover is the second one. The moving in the open the, the moving in the open, well, I think the moving one is the first one. So he could fire again ag again because why? Oh, we could possibly fire this unit here, and we're going to fire him because we're going to bring Mula over there. Now we could fire together, and now what do we have? We've got our gold star. We can move our gold star with us. We're moving, and he's in a building. So we're plus four against us, essentially. Uh, or two against us, half firepower because we moved. And our normal range is eight. So now we're going to fire on two firepower with only a plus one modifier. It's not that bad, to be honest with you, considering the results. And I didn't want to fire the other one. This guy is going to have to, this guy is going to double time like that guy. Well, that's, but that's the basics of fire, guys. That's the basics of fire there. He's broken. He's going to have to route, and then we're going to move other guys up. Okay? Uh, this leader is going to stay here. He's going to rally those units easily, easily next turn. All right, advanced phase. Both these units are going to be red, so we want to spread them out. And look at their firepower. They're full firepower. So we're going to move one guy here and one guy here. And this guy is going to go here, maybe bait a shot. And he's going to move here as well. Why can we move this guy here? Because this guy will most likely fire at full fire, double firepower at these units next to him, which means he will be free to fire. The same thing with this unit. So these guys should be pretty much safe. Uh, I might consider firing on this guy, but if he doesn't shoot the us next to us, what's our firepower? It's going to be four, four double next turn. He's going to be broken if he doesn't fire on us next turn. Easy, oh, one, one fail, one easy rally. He failed because he was under desperation. Look at this. Oh, God darn it. Just like that. Just like we anticipated. Oh, those actually move pretty fast. I need, need to move those a little slower. Okay, that's it for him. He can only fire in this unit because the wall blocks line of sight to here. So he could fire here, pinned. Now, do you see the do you see the modifiers here? One hex range, double green. I think that's a I think that's a multiplier. So that is a multiplier of two. So he should have a nominal firepower of he's pinned, so he's halved, but the double green should bring it back up to four. Right? He's running fast, which is plus one. And uh, I'm pinned, which halves it. And then he's plus two for the building. Not a great shot. This unit here, let's see what he got. All right? He doesn't have the pin modifier. The, the, exclam the yellow exclamation point is the pin modifier that, that's already applied to our unit and by what it's displayed as and the point blank. So... The point blank and the pin negate one another for all intents and purposes. So that's essentially going to be a four plus three shot. This one here is going to be an eight plus one shot. That's why the percentages are what they are. And uh, we're just going to DM this guy again, keep him DM'd. We want to keep him DM'd so he can't rally. And guess what's going to happen with him? He's going to route out of the building. If we don't fire on this unit, he might rally. And now we have to deal with the light machine gun point blank. We could fire here. This is going to be a really, uh, hey, why? We actually broke him on that one. 
And then we have our leader, which has our best shot, 14%. I don't expect it to, him to break him. And we just plunge into these guys because they're, they're the only guys that they can see. Like medium machine gun can't can't see them. All right. That's it for us. And all those units rot away. All of them rot away. All right. So timer ticks down. We have one squad to deal with. This guy can't run super fast. No big deal. He's a regular unit. This guy can't run super fast. He's a veteran unit. He has a range of six. This guy, he can run. This guy can, can't can run. And this guy can run. And the guys back here, we still failed to rally him. Bummer, bummer. He could bust ass as well. So if we want to assault this building, what are we going to do first? We need to draw us fire. The easiest way to draw us fire, and let's say we want to pile everybody in this location here. But we don't want to pile this guy because he's only a half squad. He doesn't really bring a lot to the table. He's got two firepower. So what do we do? We sacrifice him. Now let's just move him the whole way up here. Because all those guys here are broken, we're going to move him right here. He's going to get shot in the, in the other hex. Okay. He's fired once. He's going to fire again right here. And he kills him. Do we care? Say, Stu, you just threw a guy away. Yeah, he's dead. What did that do to the Russian unit? Caused him to be red. He can't fire again. What are these guys doing? They're broken. They can't fire at all. He has a leader that's stopping us from doing whatever we want. So what do we want? To, what, what, what's the easiest way to take care of this unit? First of all, uh, if we bust ass, we're going to fire. We're going to move, move this guy here. Why am I moving that guy there instead of into the building? Because I want to fire on these guys right now. I don't care what the result is. When I fire upon him, they will get the double exclamation points. Which means if he routes here or somewhere else, he can't come back as easily. I'm just... For all intents and purposes, desperation morales. Like he fought, he like he broke for the first time. He's under fire again. It makes it more difficult to 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 rally. That's his only purpose. Move up. Do that to this guy. This guy's purpose was to die next to this unit. He can't fire at anybody else. So these guys can. Uh, what we want to do is we're just going to move here. He can't fire on us. This guy is going to move in. We're not running. We're just walking. We're going to plug him. This guy's going to plug him. Nothing happens. And this guy's going to walk right here. Can't get shot. And we're going to plug him. All right. No worries. That's what we expected. We moved. He's in a good cover. He's just sitting there. And this guy here... Uh, doesn't really matter. The machine gun can't move. He can't, and he can't drop the machine gun. Uh, we don't really care about that guy. He's out of it. So we're done. He can't fire. That phase is gone. Escape phase, he routes away. We knew that what was going to happen. We know what's going to happen. Now what do we do? We don't have to throw everybody in there. I mean, right... Uh, Right now, we've got a 58% chance of killing him. If we throw that regular unit in there, we have 72% chance. If we throw Schmidt as well, we have 83% chance. I would not risk Schmidt if you go from 72 to 83. Don't throw him in there. Just throw the other squad in there. And then this guy can go here. And Schmidt can go here. Just in case he kills us all. 72% chance is good enough for me. If he kills everybody in there with Schmidt, then this guy is going to be one-to-one -one on him. All right? I'm not worried about that. Plus, if that happens, Schmidt could then re-DM this unit. So we're going to close combat. Equal chance of ambush. Not worried about that. And close combat, we have a huge advantage. Surprise, surprise. 
And that's how you approach the big farmhouse. Very simple technique. You have to understand how far they can fire. You have to understand with how much firepower they can fire with. And that will extrapolate into the results as I showed you on those tables. Okay? So that's what we're looking at when you're dealing with this thing. How many units did we lose? We lost two guys. One was because he got a lucky shot. The second one is because we chose to lose him. Not because he fired on us well. He was going to obliterate that unit one way or the other. Either break him or he's going to eliminate him. He happened to eliminate him. Those are acceptable losses for the easy wraparound victory and the jump into close combat. It's as simple as that, guys. It's as simple as that. When you're dealing with a bigger scenario, guess what? You might have to deal with guys on the left, guys on the right. If you need to get to a certain position, you need to make sure you slough off. It's like all those other war games you guys are playing, right? What do you do when you attack on the left-hand side? You've got to soak off attacks so you can have a better attack over here. It's exactly the same thing with a little bit more detail in it. It's exactly the same thing. So um, take that with into your next game. Play the same scenario. Play this scenario using the different techniques and looking at what those modifiers are. Okay, we didn't cover all of them, right? But look at what those modifiers are and how they reduce your shot down to 3%. You saw when I moved a leader in there, increased it by a bunch. Why? He's a gold leader. He does shit, you know? If you have a minus leader, you'll see the percentage go down. It's as simple as that, guys. The minus leaders are good to go rally guys that are broken all over the place. If you got broken all over the place, even the minus leadership modifier is better than not being able to rally him whatsoever. At least you get a free dice roll. At least you get a free dice roll. Okay? So hopefully that was some value to you guys. Leave your comments down below. Tell me what you think. Tell me other stuff you might be interested in learning from. Again, Neil's got a, a strong ASL background. I have a strong ASL background. We know what's going on in these scenarios. We know what the numbers mean. If you have difficulty understanding why certain situations come up, give us, give us an example. Specifically point out the scenario with the units involved. Take a, take a picture. I guess you can't put a picture up here. But do that sort of thing. And, um, and do your homework. Guess what? Read the manual. It's pretty short. Pages are really short. Probably about 50 words per page, to be honest with you. You burn through it like no time at all. Don't bother with the scenario design. Don't, I and mean, that's half of it. And then the other half is like intro. The other half is terrain. You know, those are just things that you just look up. But simple stuff. All right. Give me a like if you want. If you like it, subscribe. You know, I'm here. I have a lot of ASL stuff. Uh, if you want to look at some ASL stuff, there's a lot of SK. I have a lot of SK material, some ASL material. Um, this uh, this game is about the middle of both. So SK might be a little more simpler to look at simply because there's not a lot of extraneous rules that are thrown on top of it. All right? So, again, this is ASL without you having to worry about the stupid charts. Okay? But the charts are there. You just have to understand what can modify and it's very simplified in terms of your modifiers but they show them to you okay it's not that bad it just takes a little bit of understanding and then you guys could be hammering every scenario like i hammered farmhouse okay so where are we going the scores 661st probably because everyone got 20 uh i think it takes at least two turns to get there so Maybe they lost first. So I'm tied for first, guys. Anyway, thanks a lot. And we'll catch you next time on Stu's Replay.